So yes, thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm uh, Mathieu Sauvignier. I'm currently an invited researcher at the Center for Operation Research and Econometrics at UC Louvain in Belgium. And I have two main fields of interest. The first is regression analysis in high dimension. And the second is the analysis of non-stationary time series. And actually this talk will be about my research in this second field of interest. So I'm going to present you some results of a joint work with Sébastien van Belleguem, where we developed some new theories for multivariate multiscale model for locally stationary processes. Here, the important concepts are multivariate, multiscale, and locally stationary processes. But uh, before plunging into those uh, important concepts, let's see why, where they grow from by re reviewing some well, more well-known notion, namely weekly stationary process, as well as their spectral representation. So let X be a discrete uh, zero mean stochastic process. And we say that X is weekly stationary if its second moment does not depend on the time T. For instance, uh, there is the well-known autoregressive process for which direct calculation provide the following form or the autocovariance that indeed does not, de does not depend on time. One tool that is commonly employed to study weekly stationary processes is the Fourier transform. Indeed, uh, such a process uh, has in the L2 sense a representation in the Fourier domain where omega is the frequency, A is the amplitude of the process and the differential of uh, zeta is a random increment. And historically, taking the Fourier transform of empirical function were, was proposed in order to decompose the signal into frequencies in order to search for hidden periodicity. And you can think about this idea as in music, you hear a chord and then you try to distinguish the fundamental notes that compose this chord. And one very useful fact about the Fourier representation of weekly stationary process is that it provides you with a Fourier representation, or it provides you with a representation in the Fourier domain of the second moment, uh, where actually the modulus square of the amplitude is uh, what we call the spectrum or the spectral density of the process, plus the name of spectral analysis. And in our example, of the autoregressive process, one can derive the following closed form expression for the spectrum. So the technique involving the spectral analysis of weekly stationary process have been fruitfully employed in both natural and social science, as well as in the industry. They are often well known and are actually the origin story of multi-scale analysis. I note that if on the slide I only considered the autocovariance one important achievement of the spectral analysis of weekly stationary process is the development of a statistical theory allowing the spectral analysis of multivariate time series in order to study the relationship between different time series. Okay, so all those marvelous tools rendered possible by the Fourier transform are available for weekly stationary process. And if a bunch of, uh, indeed a bunch of empirical process may indeed fit this assumption. For instance, if you study gravitation or if you work in a lab, it seems, or it may seem reasonable to assume that the second order structure of the data you are studying does not depend on the time. But what about when you study climate? What about when you study earthquake? Or basically what about when you study any social phenomena? In other words, what about when the process you are interested in evolves over time? In those cases, it's, it's often unreasonable to assume the data generating process is stationary or even only weekly stationary. And without this assumption, this assumption, you lose something desirable, you lose something important. You lose the fact that the Fourier representation of your process implied that the second order structure of the process is it, uh, has also uh, a Fourier representation. So you lose the fact, without weak, weak stationarity, you lose the fact that this representation implied a representation of this form. So uh, we need to provide new statistical tools that are specifically designed to tackle the non-stationarity of the process, and in particular, when we want to do spectral analysis. And actually, this is what we do in our research. 
First, let's define what we mean by non-stationary process. Here we call non-stationary zero-mean process with second order structure does depend on the time. And as I just told you, the Fourier representation of those processes does not provide a Fourier representation of the second order. Here, for instance, you have two, uh, two sets of data. The, the dot red line and the blue plain line represent the first log difference of the quarterly oil production of Saudi Arabia and the one of the rest of OPEC respectively. And from the graph, it is clear that the second moment of both these time series change over time. And in particular, before and after the beginning of the 90s, you have a period of high volatility that is succeeded by a period of uh, low volatility. So there are many approach to the statistical analysis of non-stationary time series. And here we concentrate on the line of research initiated by Dallos that provided uh, the concept of local stationarity. I'm not going into detail here because of the time constraint uh, and not on the, even not on the notion of local stationarity, but we can speak about that later if you want. After Dallos, we have the seminal contribution of Nasson that suggests to employ some particular wavelet basis instead of the Fourier basis to perform the, the spectral analysis. And in the next slide, I will give a graphical representation of uh, one type of wavelet for those that are unfamiliar with the concept. But what we can say now is that wavelets are small, easily tractable functions that, that as the sine and cosine function used in the Fourier uh, domain, in the Fourier transform, are well localized in frequencies, but in addition, are also well localized in time and hence appear natural to obtain, to obtain a representation of the second order structure of the non-stationary process. From the seminal work of Nasson, the field grew. The problem of forecasting was considered, but mostly the important contribution aimed to enlarge the class of locally stationary wavelet processes that we can model and consistently estimate. And as it has been the case for the Fourier analysis of weekly stationary process, what became soon important was to extend um, the class of locally stationary wavelet processes to uh, multivariate processes. And actually, this problem to go from univariate process to multivariate process has, show, uh, has been uh, <laughs> shown to be a particularly challenging problem. There, are, there have been some contributions, some propositions, but all of them rely on particularly strong assumption on the second moment of the vector of time series. And so now I can explain you what is our contribution in this research. In this research. Uh, we provide a class of multivariate locally stationary wavelet process that, see, that significantly enlarge the existing classes. We, I really want to stress that we allow for a qualitative jump in the restriction imposed by the model. First, uh, when we compared uh, our result to the previous model tackling multivariate process, but also when we shrink the problem to the univariate case and that we compare the class of process we consider with the one that is considered in the seminal work of Nasson and Allot. The results of the research are already available in my PhD thesis and will be soon submitted in the form of two papers. The first paper is more purely mathematical this is where we develop the, the tools we need to achieve what, we, what will be presented in the second paper, where we deal with the statistical theory, in particular identification and estimation theory, that I'm going to uh, sketch now. But before that, yes, yeah, so here, so here is some graphical representation of a particular type of wavelet called the R wavelet. And as you may see, when you go from one line to the other, the wavelet is more and more dilated. This is where uh, uh, you get the frequency localization of the, world, the wavelet. And actually, we say that we go from one scale to another. So when I say I increase the scale in the future of the presentation, I say that, uh, I mean, I consider more and more dilated wavelet. But if we, and now if you compare the column, this, uh, this graph, you see that the wavelets can also be shift in the time dimension and that's how you get the time localization. So now I'm going to present you the model. So first let X be a doubly, doubly indexed p-variate stochastic process. 
that has the following representation. And we see that this representation uh, depends on two uh, sum that are indexed by J. J represent the scale of the wavelet of the wavelet, and K represent the shift of the wavelet, so the time localization. Psi represent the a kind of non-decimated wavelet with indexed by J and K. For each J and K, you also have this W, which is a matrix, and that has on uh, its diagonal P coefficient. And here you have uh, P variate uh, in just a in your syncretic increment uh, and all contribution lies there on the second order structure that we uh, assume for the uh, random shock because the contrary to uh, contrary to our predecessor we do not assume that the uh, increment are orthogonal across scale we let uh, poss the possibility of a correlation between the increment across scale. But indeed, we, we also uh, assume as our predecessor, orthogonality of the increment across time. So we, we can compare this model uh, with the model of the first restriction here with the uh, invariability of the stochastic process. But we see that national also considered a model where the random increment are orthogonal across scale and across time. And this limitation is also present in the uh, last model uh, that consider multivariability, the one of Shaw and Friselowitz. They relax the assumption of um, univariability, but they stick to the assumption of the orthogonality of the increment across time and across scale. And relaxing the assumption of orthogonality across scale is not a marginal improvement. This is actually very crucial since assuming orthogonality of the increment, both in time and scale, implies some crucial, res crucial restrictions on the second order of the time series. In particular, it implies some AV symmetries as the one exposed in the slide. And these symmetries may totally be unreasonable to, as unreasonable to assume in the case of multivariable, multivariate analysis. So now I'm going to give you a hint of the kind of result we obtain in the paper. So let's go back to our model and recall that W, uh, there are the coefficients associated with each p-variate random chucks at each time and scale. And recall that gamma here is the second moment of the random shock that at a given time may be non-orthogonal across scale. And we define from there this quantity, which is, uh, we define it analogously to the notion of spectrum arising the Fourier analysis of weekly stationary process. And we call it uh, the evolutionary wavelet cross spectrum. And our first main result is to obtain from the representation of the series in the wavelet domain, from this from yeah, from this definition, an asymptotic representation of the second order structure of uh, the time series. So actually, this represent this is this result. We need some Lipschitz uh, condition to obtain this uh, this result. This is the finite sample second order structure of the time series, and this is what we could say, the, the population second order structure of the time series. And we see that we have a representation of this second moment in, as a linear combination of the evolutionary wavelet spectrum. And this representation depends on what we call the cross correlation of wavelet function or the set of, or a set of cross correlation of wavelet function, which is defined like this and with actually a generalization of the notion of autocorrelation of wavelet function that was already defined in Nasson et al. Uh, the, the study of this function, of this cross-correlation of wavelet function, is the object of our first paper, the one that is more purely mathematical in nature. And one important result about this uh, function is that for a given family of wavelet, as the associated cross-correlation of wavelet functions are linearly independent from each other. And hence, this representation, this one, 
is unique and may be inverted. And this last idea, the idea of the inversion of the representation, is basically what is uh, said in this slide. And this is how we asymptotically identify this parameter, the evolutionary wavelet cross spectrum. The two important things are this result. This result uh, gives you the, the formula, the inversion formula of the representation of the evolutionary wavelet cross spectrum. Basically, there you had the second, the population uh, second moment that was given as a function of the evolutionary wavelet spectrum. And now we have the evolutionary wavelet cross spectrum, sorry, uh, as a function of the population second moment. Of course, the population second moment is also in the parameter space. And so in order to obtain an identification result, we provide this, uh, we provide this result that say that this quantity, this linear combination of the uh, second moment, the empirical second moment, one may say, uh, indeed converge to the evolutionary wavelet cross spectrum. So asymptotically, the evolutionary wavelet cross spectrum is indeed uh, an injection from the sample space and hence is indeed asymptotically identified. So this was for the identification theory. So now let's go quickly over our uh, result concerning the estimation. The consistent estimation of the evolutionary wavelet cross spectrum is achieved via an estimator called the corrected and smooth, set, smooth wavelet periodogram that I will now qualitatively describe because if I need to go into the, the details, uh, I will not be able to do so in 20 minutes. So the first step of the estimator, is, and this is quite standard actually when you, you know a bit of, about the periodogram, that you project the signal into the wavelet domain in order what is called the raw periodogram. And this raw periodogram, you can show that it's a biased estimator with non-vanishing variance. So we need a second step in order to obtain an estimator with a vanishing variance. So we take the raw periodogram and we smooth it. In the paper, we consider a moving average. But still, the smooth wavelet periodogram is still a biased estimator. So we need a third step where we correct the smooth wavelet periodogram. And actually this, uh, the, re the estimator resulting of this, uh, that result from this last step is indeed consistent. Uh, we also study the rate of convergence of this estimator. Uh, it depends on the, uh, on a smoothing parameter that appear in step two of the estimator. And for, uh, opti uh, for an optimal smoothing parameter, we can show that we obtain a rate of convergence of uh, square root of one over n. So yeah, so for the pleasure of the public, I generated some synthetic data and apply your estimator. So you see that uh, indeed uh, it seems that, well, sorry, it seems that the estimator converge, but maybe what is more interesting is to focus on a real data application. And here we present an application to a problem, to an important problem emerging from the economic analysis of the oil market. And the idea of the problem is to obtain a measure of the level of coordination of Saudi Arabia with the rest of uh, of OPEC in oil production. Um, yeah. So here you have the raw data of the quarterly oil production of Saudi Arabia in red and the rest of OPEC in blue. And here you have the first log difference as I already presented you earlier. And from this data, our estimator yield uh, something like this. Each graph represents the estimation of the of the evolutionary cross spectrum at different scale. Uh, one insight that you can get about this picture is that you can interpret the sum of each diagonal element. So you sum all, all of these elements and you have um, a quantity that you can uh, um, think about as the instant instantaneous covariance between the two time series. And since we have an, estim uh, an estimator for the uh, instantaneous covariance, we can have an estimator for the instantaneous correlation. Uh, and this is what we obtain when we apply our estimator uh, to uh, the data. And we see that uh, the correlation between the oil production of Saudi Arabia and of OPEC do indeed evolve over time. And we see that the tendency is that uh, it increases. They are more and more uh, correlated. 
But beyond the instantaneous correlation, we can also take advantage of the spectral analysis that decompose the signal into some frequencies. So we can obtain a measure of uh, local correlancy that is basically the measure of correlation of two signals at some given frequency. So we have this notion that gives you the correlation, the short-term correlation, the longer-term correlation. And this is quite useful if you want to explore some time series, if you want to do a historical analysis or things like that. And this is the kind of thing you can obtain. So yeah, I'm running a bit of out of, out of time. So future research will consider different paths. And here I will talk about two of them. The first one is adaptive smoothing. Uh, it appears both in theory and in practice that uh, tuning correctly the smoothing procedure is crucial for the quality of estimation. So we would like to develop uh, adaptive smoothing. And the second uh, one, the second direction for future research is that we want to capitalize on our ability to model the second order structure of a non-stationary process in order to develop evolutionary network models and evolutionary factor models. Okay, so maybe I can stop there and answer your question. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Is there any question? can unmute if you have questions you can unmute yourself maybe one small question for me as well if i may yeah yeah thank you it was a nice presentation and i deal also with wavelets at the start you mentioned hard wavelets mm -hmm. is this necessary in the construction and to which wavelets can this later be extended discrete, continuous, and so on. Thanks. Mm. So no, no, we do not assume here our wavelet. Basically, mm -hmm. the, the main assumption, the main restriction you have on the on the wavelet is that the scaling function from which you obtain the, uh, the wavelet needs to be orthogonal. So we have some condition on the orthogonality uh, that are quite standard. So all the Dobshery wavelet uh, basically satisfy uh, this assumption. And here we start, we do not consider continuous wavelet, we stick to the discrete wavelet, um, mainly because uh, empirical data always take the form of, uh, uh, of discrete data, even. Oh, yeah. But actually, the notion of local stationarity uh, introduced by, by Dallos is quite interesting if you want to study the connection between uh, an asymptotically growing set of discrete data and some uh, continuous a limiting uh, object uh, lim because when you get uh, some infinite amount of discrete data, uh, you, you get an object in air infinite, which is uh, an air infinite is then seen in L1 into on zero one. So, yeah, the, the work of Dallos is quite interesting when you are about the, this problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Um, I have just a curiosity about the uh, future direction of research on mm. factor models. You can explain a little bit uh, what uh, do you intend to do? Yes, indeed. Uh, we have preliminary results, and basically, what you what we aim for is to uh, be able to estimate. The notion of Aiken uh, vector in the evolutionary wavelet spectrum. Basically, that this is this is not completely accurate, but this is if you want to think about the direction we are taking, that we have this evolutionary wavelet spectrum that are symmetric, that are metrics. We can represent them as metrics, and we aim to to obtain uh, some Aiken value Aiken vector. Uh, uh, representation for this object and then estimate them. And, and actually, it seems that it's possible to obtain this notion of, of factor, but in uh, when you consider the case of i dimension. So when the p, uh, when the number of time series that you are considering jointly grows to infinity with the number of observation. Because there, you it appears that the Aiken value you are concentrating the, the the lowest Aiken value tends to go to zero, and so you have you you are still since since we are in L two, 
you mm -hmm. you obtain something like uh, a finite set of uh, eigenvalues that are non-zero, and then uh, the, you can focus on the associated finite set of eigenvector to obtain this notion of uh, of factor. Yeah. But th this is quite the research is quite an, at an early stage of development. Okay. Thank you.